Join us on Friday Beyond Spotlights. Can I ask, in the basic law, are there um, saline features, particular sections that uh, laid out the groundwork for, um, you know, democracy or more democracy, you know, given what you shared with us before 97? Under the British rule, we mm. do not have universal suffrage. Mm. Uh, universal suffrage is given to us by China, that the um, chief executive Mm. and they would be elected by universal suffrage by the Hong Kong people. Mm. And I must say, uh, the voters in Hong Kong, mm. uh, you don't have to be a Chinese citizen. Mm. Uh, the voters in Hong Kong, if you've got a right or a vote here, mm. you may be a Caucasian, mm. you may be uh, an American, mm. you can still vote in Hong Kong, which That's is unusual, freer right? than anybody else, anywhere else <laughs> in the world. For the mm. legislature, we mm. wrote in Article 68 that ultimately the mm. whole legislature uh, will be uh, elected by universal suffrage. Ooh. Our chief executive is not appointed by Beijing. Mm. We are elected here. It is important to note that before 1997, the governor was appointed from the UK with no democratic process. Another thing we have to deal with is, uh, you know, who has the ultimate authority to interpret the basic law. Because it is a national law of China, then the standing committee, according to our constitution, has the ultimate authority to its interpretation. Mm. And what happened is in Article 158 of the Basic Law, we write, firstly, uh, the uh, right of interpretation uh, is in the hand of the standing committee. But, second clause, uh, courts can interpret the whole of the Basic Law. But if it comes to uh, articles which is within the power of the uh, central government, then if there should be any dip dispute, in respect of this type of clauses, you would first, before the Court of Final Appeal, make the judgment, uh, consult, take this particular issue to the Standing Committee and ask for interpretation. And if they do make an interpretation, then the uh, CFA will follow it, and it becomes a president in Hong Kong. In 1997, there was the handover ceremony mm. uh, from uh, British sovereignty to back to Chinese sovereignty. Right. On the 30th of June, and I was in Hong Kong, sort of witnessing all this handover, but uh, at uh, six o'clock in the morning of 1st July, mm. I was on a plane going up to Beijing because at 10 o'clock that morning, I had to be appointed as a basic law committee member. Wow. So, uh, so uh, those two days, it was quite hectic, but very rewarding. And how has that prepared you for today? Well, um, it gave me a lot of confidence, full confidence that China will honor its promise of one country, two systems. Mm. Well, I brought along today a very precious item, uh, which is a watch given to me by my mum when I left for England to study law in 1966. And she didn't really want me to go. I was the youngest daughter. Mm. And she said, are you really going? I said, Mom, yes, yes, I'm, I'm really going. And when I come back, I will be a barrister. <laughs>